I was in the paddock picking with two other people and I seen the smoke come up and within about 15 minutes the, pop, the fire was on our place. The 2018 fire, that was a big event for us. It just seemed to go on and on and on and then we lost probably 6,000 acres in that fire there. You know, we do not like to see fire like that. No, nobody likes to see fire like that. Fire has always been part of life here in Mareeba Shire. Good fire can help renew the land, but wildfire is a danger to us all. The risk builds during our long dry season, so we've all got to work together to keep us all safe. We're all starting there and we're going up and around. We'll have our own comms, we'll sort that out once we get up to the top of the hill. What we're doing here today is just doing like a hazard reduction burn. Uh, our matey from out here wanted his block looked after. Not too long ago, just there in Kawa, there was hot fire come through and it was like more closer to summer and it just basically burnt everything, you know. Canopy fire and, you know, we do not like to see fire like that. No, nobody likes to see fire like that. So 2002 wildfire came from the Coranda dump and just it hemmed everyone through here, it jumped the Coranda, uh, the Coa Road, it jumped the Closey River and then went all through Bilwan State Forest over to Bipura. Not often we get canopy fires and fires that spot ahead, but that was one. It sort of makes you sit up and take notice. So I uh, got a bit scared there, but I was on a cleared area, I had one pump and 10, 10 44 gallon drums full of water. And I went through about eight until the fire went around me. So then I actually had to get into the burnout area because the wind changed. So that scared the daylights out of me. And the fire brigade was there, but they were working down there in another property and I couldn't raise them on the pump. So ever since then, we've been looking at ways to get together with national parks and landowners and, and the rangers to get this um, country locked down with um, hazard reduction burns. Before those fire management group meetings happened, there wasn't as much connection between rural fire brigades and say other the other agencies all trying to work together. Wouldn't work without these private landholders. Well, I put the fire brakes in, yes, and I refurbished an old dam, so there's water there. I've done those two things, and then the national parks showed up and said, "Look, can we burn?" After the, I think it was a result of the last big wildfire. So that's simple as that. One thing led to the other, but I laid the groundwork for them being able to work here. So it stops me getting burned out. And I don't like burning per se, but I can see something like this preventing big bushfires later on, so that's fine. The wildfires that start at the dump or start on the highway over near the Spearway turnoff, they don't, they don't happen anymore. They don't have an impact. For whatever reason, arsonists light up. They have their own reasons, and it can range from hunting to clearing access for motorbikes, for fossicking, king, for gold, whatever the reason, we take that away with these sort of burns. And yeah, the, the wildfire incidents between here and Davies Creek, Mad Mile was another one, have just uh, not gone down to zero, but they're down in less than 10%. So some of the areas that we burn in the Mariba Shire are Dindin National Park, Dindin State Forest, Emerald Creek, the Hand Tableland, out Mount Malloy area as well, also including Kawa areas. All up, uh, the area that we cover in mass is 90,000 hectares and over the years we like to do our burns every two or three years so we rotate all our burns. It's really important for us to have good working relationships with the rural fire brigades, all our neighbours and yeah we keep, keep them all informed in what we're doing and have yeah regular meetings with them. It's a good idea to work in with a fire brigade, national parks, all these guys, because they got the bigger picture, they got their plans, they got the resources. See, by myself, I wouldn't start anything like that. But with the resource of fire brigade, national parks, no problem. Fire is a part of our culture, and you know we we need to keep that that going. We encourage to teach younger generation to learn this knowledge about fire, country preservation, all of those things. It's absolutely critical that we continue doing this work to keep down the fuel load and heal country at the same time. Northwest now to the home of more than 30 threatened species. 
Brooklyn Wildlife Sanctuary stretches from the Upper Daintree west through eucalypt woodlands and grassy country on the Mitchell River floodplain. Here, like everywhere in Mareeba Shire, fire management is vital. I'm Andrew Francis. I'm the manager of Brooklyn Wildlife Sanctuary. I've been here for just over 10 years. The property is 59,000 hectares and it has about 5,000 hectares of World Heritage Rainforest in it. Brooklyn itself is very complex. It, it ranges from rainfall of about 4,000 millimetres down to about nine. 800 millimetres in the west. So you've got heaps of different ecosystems. You also have a main road, a highway running through the property, which is our main source of ignitions later in the year. And the main risks of, of fire is, is late season wildfires, which burn a lot more of the, the country, which l takes out all those refuge areas for small animals. It takes out your big nesting trees and all that. So we're trying to reduce the, the effects of a late season wildfire by breaking up the country into, into smaller patches of unburnt country, basically. So if we do get a wildfire, it only burns a very small patch of, of country. So by applying fire to the country throughout the year, it gives us a varied age class of fuel which allows all your granivores to feed freely on the ground just the way it's worked over thousands of years. We also have Merry Farms and Mount Carbine inside of Brooklyn and we have to protect them first. It's top, top priority for us. At Brooklyn to manage the fires there's myself and a land management officer so we can conduct all the broad scale burning across the property but when it comes to infrastructure burns where we're burning against someone's paddocks and houses extra people on board really helps and we support the local fire brigade and uh, they, they in turn assist us in in protecting basically their properties. Without their help, we wouldn't be able to do it so successfully. On Brooklyn, we, we plan to burn basically a third of the property every year. And trying to get that much burnt in a small window of opportunity is, is very hard. In the last uh, four years, we've been fortunate to have a grader, which means we can burn later in the year a lot easier, which has so, sort of helped a lot with some weed species by putting a hotter fire into them. So that's helped tremendously to be able to burn off a graded break. You cannot plan 10 years in advance because things change so much and you can't go from a prescribed burn plan that you'll burn in June the 3rd every year. You've just got to keep on assessing the country and, and seeing how it goes. It is getting harder for us to judge how the weather's going to be. You've, you've got to be able to read the, the forecast maps and try and work out what's going to happen from them because the broad scale district forecast isn't enough for what we're doing and, and the conditions we need. This year we didn't get a proper flood in the river which has affected the way we use the river as a fire break. A lot of the little creeks which we use as fire breaks didn't get a proper flood either so their effectiveness as a fire break is lessened and we've actually pulled out of a few burns that rely on that creek holding a fire. The, the most important tool that a fire manager can have is experience. Experience only comes from applying fire. You will make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, but um, that's how you gain experience. Southwest and deeper inland now to Dimbula farming country. Mangoes, tropical fruit, fresh veggies, much, much more. It's drier here and wildfire is a regular danger. Our names are Rachel and Ryan Gunderson. We live in Dimbula. We have a farm that produces limes and passion fruit. We've got 105 acres. We've got a creek on one side of our place. We've been here for around four years and each year we've been affected 
by bushfires, whether it's from arson or um, larger bushfires sweeping from neighbouring properties. So in September 2019, we had a fire come in. We were, I was in the paddock picking with two other people and I seen the smoke come up and within about 15 minutes the, prop, the fire was on our place, pretty much a light within an hour. But luckily we had help from all our neighbours turned up, all the fire brigade and there was a helicopter here at the time that was bombing it. It was three weeks in the area It was we were all fighting it for and helping everyone where we could. We lost all the irrigation that I'd just finished setting up in our passion fruit, ready to plant and all that got burnt. We lost all that, plus we lost probably 20% of our orchard got burned as well, just singed on the outside of the lime trees. And then yeah, some, probably 15 of the new trees that I'd just planted, they got, we lost them as well. So we try to keep all our brakes slashed if we can and just keep everywhere around the place mowed and all the orchards are watered. We've also got a loader and a grader that we've got access to that we can do our breaks. It's really important to have good communication with your neighbours and we probably would have lost our whole, whole farm if it wasn't for everyone in the community that came and helped us that day. Without the support from the community and our neighbours and friends, we wouldn't be able to do it. We're in the high country now, Irvinbank, where tin mining started a boom back in the 1880s. We're way up in the hills and that's challenging terrain in which to fight a fire. I'm Jeanette Hodgkinson, Avonbank Royal Fire Brigade. i um, been in the brigade for over 20 years. So we go out from the brigade into the community to let people know of what's happening. If there's a fire coming into town, we give them information. We also do preparedness to make sure that their yards are prepared for the incoming fires. The risk here is normally um, wildfires coming in from either surrounding areas, like if it's sort of over Garnet Way and it's sort of crept its way over into the hills and come into us. Um, lightning strikes is another good one coming out of lease land or arson. Someone's gone out and flicked a match and thought that they'd like to see people run around in the hills in yellow. My name's Rob Maloney, part owner of the property up here. We call Mine Albion Station. We've been up here for about 20 years now and yeah, slowly sort of built our cattle numbers up and improved the infrastructure over that time. We've got 20,000 acres here. A lot of it's fairly rangy sort of country, which is difficult to, to manage when, when a fire does come in. All you can do is pick a break, dress that break up with a dozer or a grater and then try and stay in front of the fire and burn back off that break and try and burn itself out. And then you've just got to keep watching that break for a couple of days after, because you get flare up, especially this time of year. Generally, we, if fires is a, is a yearly event here. The 2018 fire, that was, that was a, um, a big event for us. It just seemed to go on and on and on. And we lost probably 6,000 acres in that fire there. Coming, coming into the fire season, we sort of assess year after year on where fires were in previous years so we kind of know where the fuel load was and now is, is burnt out. Nuffy is a good resource that I use a fair bit. I've, I've got some alerts set up in there now so if I'm away I'll get an email if it picks up a hot spot within the area I've set. Besides Nuffy I'll also take a gyrocopter up and just do a bit of a recce around the area. If I see smoke I'll go for a fly out and just try and locate that fire and, and just get a bit of a picture in my mind, lay the land where the fire is and also the, the fire brigade at Irvine Bank, Janet's always helpful. If there's a fire around and I'm not sure where it is, I'll just give Janet a ring. With the resources, what we've got and the local knowledge, what the landowners have got, we work together due to the fact that we go to like Robert at Mount Albion, if he's got a fire on his land and we actually say, we've got the resources, you've got the local knowledge. You let us know what you want and where you want us and what you want us to do, whether you want us to backburn here or just to stop, monitor, put out. So I love doing what I'm doing and helping the community in any way. So it's just something what we've been brought up to do as a family. We're heading north now, up the Mulligan Highway to Weatherby, near Mount Malloy, a cattle property since the 1870s. The country's changed since then, increasing the potential for wildfire. John Collis, uh, we're at Weatherby Station. We prefer to call it Weatherby these days. I've got my daughter Julia here with me today. 
Uh, the actual homestead is located about four kilometres from the village of Mount Malloy, where uh, we actually wrap around Mount Malloy on the, uh, on the eastern and southeastern side of Mount Malloy, which is of interest because uh, that's where the Coranda National Park is. It goes virtually right through to Coranda, and uh, our most prevailing wind year-round is the southeast trades, and uh, that's the direction where the National Park is and that's where lightning and some arson events have happened in the past. The neighbouring properties are, are basically um, commercial cattle entities and sugarcane. And then you've got lifestyle blocks, um, people that, that want to live in a rural environment. Uh, we've got about 34 neighbours at last count. Mm. As a, I can speak as a, as a newbie to the town, um, I've, I've moved up quite a few years ago, lived on the farm, and now I've got a little um, lifestyle block in town. And um, from, my, from my perspective, I would love to know more about the, what the fireys do and what it would be to, to, to join and what I can actually do to make sure my place is prepared for, for bushfire season. Having, having a bit of knowledge about what, what they are, how they act and how I can act in, in, a, in, a, in an environment emergency I think would be um, really beneficial for people like myself and new, other newcomers to the town. The uh, responsibility to manage, control, prevent fire is critical for Weatherby to fit in with the, with the whole landscape. We've been here probably the last 17 years, uh, in the, even in that small window, there I've noticed a change in uh, the load of combustible fuel that's out there. And that's built up because uh, there, is a, there is, is a subtle change in the use of land. Um, and on that basis, we need to be talking, and we do actively with, for instance, the Rural Fire Brigade. Bill McCurley's our first officer and the crew at the Mount Malloy Rural Fire Brigade. Uh, with Rob Miller, the senior ranger with Coranda National Park. And we work closely with neighbours. One of, one of them has actually put a great big 20,000 gallon tank right on their boundary with a cam lock fitting so that our boys can hook in and girls in our rural fire brigade can hook in when they're doing a back burn or trying to put a fire out, can hook up eight kilometres from town with a quick fill water instead of having to come back into the nearest hydrant back in the village of Mount Malloy. Reba Shire Council have got uh, land adjoining us. They've got roads, um, they get rates, uh, they take money from us when we're happy to give it for as a fire levy and that levy is put back into some of this fire prevention which includes the major ring road or donut if you like around the village of Mount Malloy which happens to run right through Weatherby and down the spine of Weatherby so we've got a big ring road if you like which is graded and our first officer Bill McGurley with his trusty D4 goes through each year <clears throat> well before the the cool fire burning season to put that fire break in and maintain that fire break. I normally try and get it done as soon as end of the wet as soon as possible because sometimes you can start burning right at the end of the wet. Sometimes you can't. Well if we didn't have that there, well, I reckon about four times in the last twenty odd years, the town would have burnt. It's as simple as that. Because we use that, we backburn off it, and we've got other little roads around in town here we can use too. If it gets across, we've got a second place to start from. So what does Mount Malloy do well? As a community, uh, we talk to each other. Um, the Rural Fire Brigade's made up of people that live in town. I can name them. We've got wonderful community, wonderful volunteers in the Rural Fire Brigade and the SES. We look out for each other. We've got, a, we've got three good units in the shed, uh, good communication, Facebook. UHF radio. Facebook groups as well. Facebook, 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 good Facebook, one. Facebook groups. We've got people that have been here for one, two, three, four generations, and they know where the roads are, which way the wind comes from, who's an absentee owner. I'm understanding more and more that it's an important role to join the join the local fireys to be part of the community and to be aware of what's happening around, but also there for that um, for the fireys to be able to educate and to be be um, approachable to be able to give information. Working together with good information will help us all to be living safely with fire in Mariba Shire. 
talk to your family, talk to your neighbours and friends, track down your local fire warden and give us a call. Gulf Savannah, NRM.